Also on the scene was the councilman Babcock, who had a quite a different view of the proceedings. It is wrong to treat orcs and half-orcs as if they were animals. Something needs to be done about the system of laws that discriminates against certain races. This reporter feels that Mr. Bab Babcock should keep to his own affairs and leave the discipline of the unruly lower races to qualified individuals such as Captain Wheeler. But this is happening right now? Guys! Uh, that's... Is it, at 15, isn't that Bates Factory? I don't... I think it is. Good lord, what is going to happen? Everything seems fairly quiet. Oh no. The situation calls for compassion and restraint, please. What would you do if you had been taken from your natural home and forced to leave in the factory? Please, you must listen to me. Uh, if natural home and forced to work under these conditions. Please, you must listen to me. There are noble beings. Can I... Your presence here is exacerbating the situation call uh, uh, What? I can't, I can't read it, it's, uh, well, it, it's on, the text is here, I can, you can read it too. Some of it is just scrolling so fast. Um, this must be Babcock. Greetings, citizen, what is going on here? That totalitarian Captain Wheeler, as some noble orcs were striking for their rights, trapped inside the factory, the, this factory. Captain Wheeler, whatever he is, whoever he is, is the captain of the Tarantian Guard. He believes that orcs aren't fit to live, let alone have any rights. That's what all this is about. All the orcs want is the right to unionize. I am trying to keep this from deteriorating into, well, into what happened last time. What happened last time? It was a massacre. Captain Wheeler mowed the protesters down with a mechanized gun. It was horrible. I suppose that is why they chose to hold up inside a factory this time instead of protesting in the open. For Wheeler to get inside, he'd have to sacrifice some men, and that would look bad for him. What happened to Wheeler after he killed the protesters? Nothing. Some on the council actually wanted to give him a medal. Yeah, it's always like that. That's shocking. Yes, it is, and what, the, what is more, I feel it is directly responsible for the situation that has arisen here today. Why? The orcs feel they have to do things like this to draw attention to their plight. They feel they cannot effect any change through political ends when they are seen as expendable beasts. It is all the more the pity, as Mr. Throg could be just the man we are looking for. Mr. Trog, the man you are looking for. Don Trog is the leader of the orcs because he has human blood. We can make a case for his rights to unionize before the council. There has never been a case to determine the rights of a half-orc under the law. If a half-orc can pass for human, then they usually keep their heads down so that others won't think of them as orcs. And if they look like orcs, well, I see. So Mr. Trog appears to be human. He is unique in that his features have a distinctive orcish cast to them, but instead of making him look the dumb brute, it actually gives him somewhat the appearance of a swarthy rogue. And I've never met an alpha orc with the charisma he has, or near anyone else for that matter. So, what can be done here? Don Trog must be convinced to give up this foolishness and work with us. This way he has chosen leads to death. 
Captain Wheeler will not let him leave that building alive if given the choice, so the choice must not be his to make. Mr. Strobe needs to sleep out in the night to be certain that he may live to fight another day. But this guy already went hiding once, I think I read a newspaper about it. Why don't you go in there and propose your plan to him? Because as a council member I represent the establishment which is holding him down. He will not speak with me, an outsider such as yourself, however, could gain his ear. Fine, I will speak with him, but what do I need to do? Simply go in there and propose my plan to him. I'm certain he will listen to reason. You have the keys? They've locked themselves inside, but I convinced the owner to give me the key. Okay, I see what I can do. Have a nice chat with old Babcock, did you? He convinced you to he convinced you the poor orcs need our understanding? Look, I'm helping him put an end to this situation without killing people, I suppose. You do what you want. If I get the chance, I'm killing Throg. Yeah. Who are you? What are you doing here? Wheeler send you? Speak or I kill you. Um, I'm here to speak with Mr. Strong to help you guys. He looks you over suspiciously. He's in the back. You try anything, you'll be dead. Yeah, fine, I'm just an halfling. Just don't ever, don't ever show your back to me. <laughs> He's here. Uh, hello? This dark brooding figure slowly turns to face you. His British features somehow accentuate his noble stature rather than detract from it as one would expect. So they have finally sent someone to kill me, have they? I'm here to deliver a message from Mr. Babcock. Babcock? What does he want? Does he still think we can gain rights through the system? Yeah, I understand you there, man. The system is never very good, is it? Well, yes, he has devised a way for you to gain the right to unionize. Babcock. What does he want? Does he still think he can get rights through the system? So, Babcock, Bab Babcock has proposed already. He already has a plan, okay. Why should I listen to him, or you for that matter? You can continue to hide out in factories, I suppose. Touché. Your wit serves you well, and you do make a good point. What is Babcock selling this time? <laughs> I suppose something that will put you legally beyond Wheeler's reach. Mm, all right. You have my ear. It would be intensely gratifying to use the, the law against Wheeler for once, instead of the other way around. Okay, he wants to establish a right as someone who is half human. I see. If it is done skillfully enough, it may work, and then what? Once he proves you have rights, you can create a union. For once, old Babcock might be on to something. He said Wheeler is sure to kill you if he gets the chance. Tell Babs not to worry, we'll slip out of here under the cover of the night. I'll meet up with him later to plot the humiliation of Wheeler, among other things. Thank you for delivering this message to me. Well, you're welcome. Gar, yes, sir. do you have something what can I answer for you? to say about this? No, not really. Well, he's not really an orc, so... Mr. Babcock, I convinced him to escape, he will, need, he will meet with you later, he said. Splendid, splendid, thank you so much for your help. You've done the city of Taranta great service. And thank you. Bye. That was weird. Huh. Hmm. 
What am I? Oh, the Panari Temple and Appleby's house. Didn't I say that I wanted to raid this place? He is sleeping with his door completely open. Huh. I'm so tempted. He didn't wake up. Sword of the Darian Ka? Yo, man. Whatever. That is... Uh, who is he? Oh, let's get out of here. That might be an item for the thieves underground. Hoi, milady. Do you have any other rumors? The Panari Temple has been gifted with the blessed jewel of Hebe. It has been set into a medallion and it is said that he who wears it will be loved by all. We have a buyer awaiting its arrival. That sounds too good to give back to you. Something else? Rumor has it that Parnell's just got in some rare essence of Will of the Wisp. It fetches quite a price on the secondary market. Huh. Where is the black market located? It's down near Madame Lille's on Low Dervish Row. You will want to speak with Mr. Black. Yeah, I know them already. I thought there was a bigger market, but... Huh. So our friend Parnell... still has some surprises to give us? How fortunate! Maybe you could try sneaking in again. You know, done. you wait here, guys. Sure. I'll do it later. Of course, sir. Uh. Of course it's locked. I don't think anybody's seeing me really. Because I'm an expert now, ha ha ha. Mr. Dixon, can't you open it? We love the Wisp Essence. It's not the one the woman in Kintara wants, so we are alright to give it to the Thieves Guild. Expert prowling is super cool. Huh. <laughs> it actually is. I've never really used brawling, but it, it's starting to work now that I am an expert on the higher levels. Okay, guys. And dog. And uh, guard. Yes, sir. I'm ready. And uh, how can Marcus. I help you? It's about. And what is uh, it? I'm ready. Hey, Mr. Black. Mr. Black of the Black Market. Um, I have the Will of the Wisp Essence. Yes, we have been awaiting the arrival of that piece. 
Thank you for retrieving it for us. The underground is paying a finder's fee of 200 coin for it. Here you are, Mr. Dixon. Good work. Mm. I wish I could get rid of the sword now, but... That job was not requested, technically, so I understand. He said the Panari temple had something. I suppose that would be extra difficult to do. The place has windows. It's always open and that guy is always standing there. There is no way he will actually let it me... It is done. Sure. I'll do it right. Of course, sir. There is no way he will actually... I don't know if expert prowling will be enough. <laughs> that is slightly ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this cannot work. Or can it? I don't know. Uh, uh, really? Well, let's say that Virgil and Co are talking with him. <laughs> Don't tell me it is going to jam. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Ugh. Jewel of Hebe. Beauty plus two and charisma plus one. Oh! Ah, that's insanely good, though. Ah, maybe I do not want to give that back. Why did I ever drop my weapon? And I'm using the Sword of the Darian card, that's great. I wonder how Virgil would actually accept me doing this. Well, maybe Sog was, dis was distracting him. <laughs> That's more believable. And Virgil and the co were somewhere else. I don't know, in an inn or sleeping. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. So, guys, we are getting back together. Yes, sir. I'm ready. How can I help? It's about... What is it that... I'm ready to... <sighs> Wow. Jewel of Hebe is good. The Medallion of Silence gives me prowling plus two, though. Hmm. Sog as a medallion of beauty. Because it's the charisma plus one I'm interested in more than anything. Gar, you can wear this. It's a medallion of beauty. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we are not turning that in. Hey, do you have something else for me? I hear some new kind of experimental engine cal called the Heron device has been created. It is said to be heavily guarded in a warehouse near the Bates factory. The underground wishes ownership of this device. 
Hmm. Any new jobs? Sorry, Mr. Dixon. The boss feels you may have too much work right now. It seems you have several jobs outstanding. Maybe you should take care of business first. Then we can talk about other opportunities. Hmm. Yeah, we are keeping the medallion. We need to stash this sword somewhere. You can keep it, Sog. Fine. Then we have Virgil. Keep, keep that, Virgil. And my note about prowling and such. Okay. Uh, we have also the one in here, right? We are supposed to be stealing something from here. Hmm. Let's see if I manage this. Of course, sir. Sure, I'll do it. It is done. Hello. Uh, I I can't really talk to you then. Yeah, nothing. Oh, wow, how many interesting books are here. Right? So many. I just made a trap explode and you didn't notice. Leth Weaver and Venom. It's a little bit weird, yes, that uh, Mr. Dixon is stealing. <laughs> because, oh wait, you guys need to come with me, right? <laughs> He's stealing Venom that can be used, I don't know, can be used from... I mean, a master poisoner can use it to kill somebody, and yet he, Mr. Dixon, is very against murder and stuff like that. But the yes, thrill, uh, I'm ready to fall. The thrill of uh, thievery uh, it, is just, uh, it, he cannot help it. About? Uh, this is what the is thing want, about Amber? him. He's. He's just like that. He doesn't make sense to himself. <laughs> maybe inside his head, maybe he's thinking, oh, maybe this item is for a collector that really likes the animal and that, that's about it. <laughs> but really. But you know, stealing things, how can you resist? <laughs> Such is Mr. Dixon. <laughs> A living contradiction. Mr. Black. I have the Lee Weaver and Venom. Yes, we have been awaiting the arrival of that piece. Thank you for retrieving it for us. The underground is paying a finder's fee of 200 coins for it. Here you go. Good work. My pleasure. Goodbye, Mr. Black. Milady. Something happening lately? I hear that there is an enchanted looking glass hidden away in Mrs. Pettibone's home. Over on Langston Road, we have someone interested in obtaining such a remarkable item. Sure, I can do that. I'm, I'm just waiting for her to ask me about the Darian Cass sword. <laughs> Maybe it's fr the Darian Cass sword is from another quest altogether. Ah, I know who she talking about. She's talking about Mrs. Pettibone. That harpy. The one that wanted us to retrieve the funeral stone? Hey, Perryman. Standing guard? Is Mr. Willoughby actually here? 
No, where the hell is his office? I wish you could tell me, Mr. Perryman. Ah, Mrs. Pettibone. Hey, welcome back to the cover of the night. We are in Mrs. Pettibone's house. Yes, that Mrs. Pettibone, Mrs. Pettibone. And uh, we are about to try and open this chest and... Uh, uh, ah, the looking glass. All right. I'm so happy that I'm stealing from her. Hey you, how tricks, brother? I forgot my people. Mm -hmm. I'm doing nothing. Yes, sir. What would you have me do? Oh, I'm ready to follow you, sir. Uh, I've clicked on you from the inside, and, and the door is locked now. I uh, come on, I opened it before. Dog. <laughs> How can I help you? It's about. And very What is it that you? I'm. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, I forgot to, to record when I was entering the house, but yeah, that's manageable. That was manageable. Because our prowling now is so decent that we can pull that off. I mean, Mr. Dixon's prowling, that is. Mr. Black. I have something you are looking for. I have the enchanted looking glass. Yes, we have been awaiting the arrival of that piece. Thank you for retrieving it for us. The underground is paying a finder's fee of 100 coin for it. Here you are, Mr. Dixon, and good work. Goodbye, Mr. Black. Hmm. So satisfying to steal from that lady. Ah, madame, what else? Any rumors? Cassie keeps a very valuable collection of jewelry in the back room of Madame Lille's. We know someone with a bit of a fetish for Cassie. He's very interested in obtaining her jewelry. Why not her underwear? Seriously. 